We are here today because we are taking another picture of the CO2 that's underground under the Aquastore site. We've injected over 260,000 tons of CO2 and it's time right now to get another picture of it. Uh, we do this by uh, using seismic imaging technology. It's a sound wave that you send down into the ground. It bounces off rocks that reside there and comes back to the surface. And we can process those data to produce a three-dimensional image of the underground in a block of earth that's three by three by three kilometers. And we can slice and dice that to look at where the CO2 is. You need a reservoir that will take the CO2, but you also need a cap rock or a seal above it that would keep the CO2 from rising up out of the reservoir and coming back up to the surface. The CO2 travels through a pipeline and gets sent into a well that's about 3.4 kilometers deep. It gets sent into a sandstone formation, it's a, a saline formation, there's a salty water in it, and the CO2 gets injected there and stored in there forever. There's been uh, previous tests just like today. Uh, we started with a baseline with zero CO2 injected. Uh, we then had another one at 36,000 tons injected, then one at 141,000 tons. And here we are today at 270,000 tons injected. And we're gonna take another snapshot of what that CO2 plume looks like underground. We can see at the surface we're recording quite a lot of, of noise, which is the wind. There are two uh, important parts at a 3D seismic survey. One is the receivers and the other one is the noise source. So the noise source could be either a vibrosis vehicle or dynamite shot. In our case at Aquastore today, we're using the dynamite shot. That's the dynamite then? Yeah, yeah. that's the dynamite. We will be setting them off in a time sequence and the, the waves that bounce off the reservoir will be measured by geophones and fiber optics at surface. There's a two and a half kilometer by two and a half kilometer area of investigation. Across this square, there's 630 geophones. Now a geophone is a microphone that is placed in the ground and listening to sound waves. Each geophone is about 20 meters in the ground and they're about 70 meters far from one another. Yeah, so here's our splice cassette. Uh, and then you pull on the cassette. Ultimately, you're just trying to get top of the well, right? We use fiber optics. It's like fiber that you use for uh, the internet. And we put this on the surface and down uh, boreholes to record the seismic surveys. They're all converging upon the uh, computers that are in the shack behind me, and they are gathering data there. And in this room, our crew are making sure that they are, they are receiving the quality data and uh, they're making sure everything is working fine. Surveyors come out, they survey the program, put flags in the ground and show us where we need to drill the dynamite holes. Line locators come out, locate after survey, Drills come out, drill the holes on the program, load them with dynamite. The dynamite charges are about one kilogram of dynamite and they're placed in these uh, shot holes that are about 15 uh, meters deep in the ground. And then once it's all green and we're good to go, we start shooting the program, shoot the dynamite off. sound waves travel down through the earth and that is all transmitted back to the boxes. When the dynamite shot goes off then waves are created in the ground and when it reaches the cable the cable uh, moves a bit uh, because of the, the energy that comes across the cable 
and then we record that, that change uh, in the cable. Here's a, here's a dynamite shot. So here, this is coming in on the surface cable and then in the borehole. And what that data will allow them to do is, uh, once they look at it and develop it, like, a, like you would uh, film, uh, it will give us a picture of what the CO2 looks like underground. We are trying to demonstrate that we understand the process of CO2 injection and storage. So just like you would monitor a baby with ultrasound, we're doing the same thing and watching how this CO2 plume develops over time, just trying to make sure that it is a safe and efficient method for putting CO2 in the ground, which helps reduce CO2 emissions to the atmosphere and making sure that it stays where we put it. The CO2 we have stored here is the equivalent of taking 54,000 cars off the road for one year. What we're doing is cutting edge. There's no place really like it in the world uh, with this level of investigation that we're able to uh, pull off here at Aquastore. So we've gathered the attention of the entire world uh, on Aquastore from the politicians to the policymakers and, and other oil and gas operating companies who are looking for solutions like the ones we are providing at Aquastore. People from all around the world who are looking for a solution to climate change come here to Estelan, Saskatchewan to see the Aquastore CO2 storage project. They use our information to start their own CO2 storage project. The UK is looking to develop CO2 storage now and the things that we've learnt here are going to be very important for the, the projects in the UK and in Europe in general. The Aquasaur project is part of Saskatchewan and Canada's mitigation strategy for climate change. We do this work in order to mitigate the emissions from things like coal-fired power plants, the natural gas plants or cement plants, and what the science that we do at Aquasaur uh, will help to inform all of these future projects because uh, CCS or carbon capture and storage has to be a big part of Canada's strategy uh, to fight climate change.